You're watching Real Flicks Reviews. This week we're reviewing Ghost in the Shell, Beautiful Mind, and we bring you movie news at the end of the show. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, Hello. and we don't have Ryan Preston. Jerk. We wanted to apologize about last week's episode because of some continuing technical issues we've been having in our studio. We weren't able to uh, record last week's episode. Oh. So this week we're doing a special double episode where we're reviewing Ghost in the Shell and Beautiful Mind. Back to back, so. Yeah, so it's going to be a little shorter on, on our discussions, so we still hope you enjoy this week's program. And I picked Ghost in the Shell. So you get to start off? Uh-huh. Yep. And for a little quick synopsis about it, it's this movie was about was uh, directed by a guy by the name of Mamaru Osh- Oshi. I, I'm I know I'm not pronouncing that correctly, so my sincere apologies. I'm sure somebody out there will correct it or understand your whatever. And nobody's gonna understand that because I'm not sure what I said. <laughs> so uh, it was Ghost in the Shell was made in 1995, and it's about a female cyborg cop and her partner hunts a mysterious, powerful hacker called the Puppet Master. Extremely succinct. But, um, so, so one, one, one of the things I thought about this is I love the animation style. Um, and this being an older, made in 1995, um, it still has some of the hand-drawn effects that I, I, I love. Yeah. Um, but I also think it holds up compared to some of the movies that's junior. Um, within five years, you know, they were starting to use a lot of CG. And I think some of those just weren't holding up to what they could. Well, when you have talent and you have people that are very good at what they do, I mean, they can always make things that can last, True. basically what it is. And True. CG being computer and that, you know, as you develop and get better and more advanced technologies that are cleaner and better, I mean, it's not going to f- hold up in today's world. True. Course. True. And I, I guess traditional animation style is, it, we're used to it, so it's something that is still always hold up. Well, yeah, and I mean, uh, there's and people that can do full-on 3D images on a piece of paper. So yeah, they've perfected it over 50, yeah. 60 years. So yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is, I think the story has a very Blade Runner esque aste- uh, uh, aesthetic to it. You know, this the style of it. Excuse me, it has a, a Blade Runner style slash cyberpunk kind of look to the animation itself. Um, I think it's not as much cyberpunk as I originally thought. Um, I think there's some aesthetics to it but not a whole lot compared to I think more Blade Runner ish. Okay, what do you mean by the cyberpunk? Just get down to that. I mean I can see the Blade Runner in there. What do you, what are you picking out um, of? I was of thinking that like I was thinking his eyes, some of the clothing. Just the style of that. Th- yeah, that that stuff. I mean Alright, I, I could see that. Uh, I, I get, I'll give you that. I mean I see more Blade Runner uh, they're kind of stepping out of the 80s type of thing, so they weren't going too 80s with, yeah. the, you know, the, the kind of punk style jackets and things like that. But nah. And I right. think I think the other, I think the story is a combo of Blade Runner, iRobot, and AI. Um, Blade Runner was with Harrison Ford, iRobots with Will Smith, obviously. And AI, if you're not, if you don't remember, it was uh, 10, 12 years ago, is with Haley Joe Osmond. Yeah, it's about that. Um the other thing is I always thought it had a very interesting moral story, um, whether healthy people should be allowed to replace healthy human flesh with mechanical cybernetics, um, and what happens when, when it's stronger than traditional humans. Should they be dialed down? Should they be stronger than everybody? What's the story? And, and, and I, I always found that a very interesting. And the other one is I love the mechanical design. I love the overall layout of the cars, the buildings. There's a helicopter in one episode that does this hover mode where like the, the, the wings, you know, wings extend, they spread out like this. And yeah, I mean, those are some pretty cool things there. And the way they created those is very intricate. Somebody actually put some good thought into oh, that. Oh, totally. Like we were mentioning with, uh, during the movie of kind of trying to guess where the cars, mirrors were, if they were even video cameras, if they weren't, if they were actually, <coughs> you know, reflective mirrors or what. Yeah. And it just goes to show that somebody actually came up with these ideas, created the concept. And, was that, was that and that's the, just the car. They, was that the car it. that had the, when the guy was backing up, that had the back and the, the on it? The what? That you know when he was backing oh, up, no, had the no, word no. back. It was the car that uh, the guy that you're saying that the cyberpunk. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was driving that one. It yeah, wasn't yeah, that's the, right. Yeah, so that's the one that we were kind of thinking. But yeah, even like you just mentioned, is that there was the car that when it was backing up, instead of having the white lights, 
it just wrote back. Yeah. And I like how this is a Japanese movie. They're all speaking J Japanese, With and that's English. written in English. Yeah. So, you know, it's just one of the fun things about... I, I did read, though, anime. on IMDb. I don't know if it's true, but it said something like it was released the same time in the U.S. and Japan at the same time. See, that's cool. Which, I, I guess, for the time, was one of the very first... Um, co-releases because hmm. generally it's released in Japan then a year yeah, or two yeah. it's in an America yeah. because at least of licensing. a year or two yeah, so, yeah, so then, what, what are your points well uh, like you said it's a very controversial film this is the, one of my points that I have it brings up some very ethical questions and one of the ones that I always like that I that kind of stuck out to me was that there was a guy that they were questioning that had you know implants in his mind like Johnny Mnemonic type of thing where it's got like the memory there's a storage up there and somebody was able to hack that oh, and yeah, create yeah. different memories in him so it was kind of like a little bit of Johnny Mnemonic in that sense that they called it ghost hacking they yeah. don't really explain what that is but it's something where I guess somebody can remotely hack. I mean, if you can pick up Wi-Fi with that with your memories in there, that's kind of interesting. See, that, that, that whole thing scares me. I mean, having <laughs> somebody hack into your mind, I forget things enough as it is. The last yeah. thing I want is somebody going, control all, you, you know. Yeah, delete. <laughs> I'm sorry, you cannot fall in love. <laughs> you yeah. know, type of thing. Forget your kids, you know. That's something that is very controversial. If people even want that, I mean, you can always increase your memory. You can get a better memory. But that's something that is very pushing it. And the other one is, that I think the concepts of this is kind of cool in the fact that some of the things that they came up with, and you said this was in 1995, yeah, are just now even becoming really possible and legitimate for us now. Like they actually have robotic arms that actually are starting to look like they yeah. fit and functioning. Like, yeah they fit with your body that there's no seams or you know and they don't have like you know these little hooks that we grew up with that people had when they lost their arm yeah or you know straight peg legs you know they're they're starting to come up with ideas that are even possible now and this is something that came out in 95 that they were joking about or not joking but you know they were they were kinda, showing they were having sci-fi or fantasy well, that with was it. that was one thing i always thought animation in general shows is is the the idea of advancement and cybernetic technology yeah. is the combination of man and machine but another point that i brought up is it even if this becomes possible like actually legitimate for this day for this day how much control are you going to have to actually relinquish i mean if you have a mechanical arm that has a couple tons of gripping power. Yeah, gripping power or pressure that can be applied. Is are they gonna start, you know, putting limitations on it? How much control are we gonna give up? Is there gonna be a safety shutdown switch? Is there gonna be a limitation on it, like a governor chip? Or even like if you have the mind and you have to have a, are they, a yeah. an eye put in that, you know, you process through your brain. Is there gonna be privatized rights? Okay, well, a little up? a little side story, a sidebar about this. There was a guy, I wish you remembered what it is, but it was in France, has these electronic glasses actually bolted to his head hmm. and it was in a mcdonald's in france and he had a doctors know everything saying that uh, they're physically attached to his head the people at mcdonald's actually assaulted him and tried to rip it off on his head tried to physically rip it and it's Ooh. attached with special bolts and the this thing only records when he falls down or somebody tries to remove it so in the process of physically hurting him, everybody involved took pictures of themselves. And he put all the pictures with fuzzy heads and stuff, but took all the pictures of the people who assaulted him in Paris. Wow. You know, so that's... Why that's, were they attacking him? I Probably to do with privacy concerns. You're, okay. you're entering a private business. Do you have the right to record... Um, it, it does bring up some privacy yeah. concerns, like James says, and I, I think it's just it, and it, it's going to be an advancement in society, what's acceptable and what's not. Yeah. Another part that I brought up is the visual aspects of this movie, like you said, really hold up. And most of these concepts that they have in there are really cool concepts. Um, but along with those types of things, the editing in there is very smooth. The transition sequences from one one part of the story to the next part were very well done. There wasn't like something that just kind of like felt choppy or you know felt um, rushed. Yeah. The the pacing was amazing. Yeah. No so, fast cuts. So no, the yeah. editing was very well done. The direction was very well done. i got to give a hands off to uh, whatever you guys. I, there's no way I'm pronouncing it. Memo or whatever his it's, name is. But he did a really great job. And along with that is that the voice the voice acting in there was really good. I mean, there was nothing in there. There wasn't a voice in there that you thought was 
okay, this guy kind of sounds like he should be a mouse type of thing, and he's like a really deep voice, you know. They match the character, the, the the physical design of the characters very well. I thought. Yeah, that's one of the things that you kind of lose when you don't go subbed versus when you go subbed versus dubbed, is sometimes the American actors don't really match up with how the portrayal of the of the character is drawn. Exactly. And that's something that you can always have an issue with. <coughs> There's, oh, sorry, a, a little sidebar um, between James and I. Is a lot of time we're watching anime. We usually have, <clears throat> we usually have subtitled in English on. Yeah. Um, English dubbing. One of the reasons is because of the differences between the Japanese or original language. Uh, some of the story doesn't translate correctly when they dub it. I we don't know why. It just yeah. Happens. It's 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 something about that. Basically, what you would usually get when you have something subbed is you actually have somebody who understands the Japanese language very well, and they understand some of the little tones, the the the, the subtleties, the subtleties of it. Because there's a lot of subtlety that goes into the Japanese language that gets lost in translation. That's a very big concern of somebody who watches anime a lot. If you have somebody who dubs it, the actors, the voice actors of it, have their own interpretation that sometimes they'll do. There's some ad-libbing that can happen. And they're also trying to, to yeah. match the... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you right. off. But they're also trying to uh, match the mouth. One of the things, yeah. if you notice with older style anime, some in the 80s, some in the 90s, is you actually see the mouth move, and then a few seconds later, you know, yeah. that thing it stops and starts. Um, watch the cartoon series... Uh, Oh, what is it called? It's something racer. Speed racer? Speed racer. It was out in the <laughs> 60s and 70s. Thank you. Um, one of the reasons it has that weird vocal and, and storytelling style is because they were trying to match the mouth movements. Yeah. So. Um, the last point I really had was basically uh, the last point I really wanted to bring something in about the main storyline. And there is already a vast number of children on the web, on the internet, who are undisciplined? Could you pass me a pen real quick? Uh, yes, uh, undisciplined, unparented, not spanked, and in this, the whole story about this is, is that the puppet master picks out the main character, the Ghost in the Shell girl, and basically wants to not so much like have sex with her, but to meld with her and create other AIs out there that aren't really going to be parented as well they're just going to become little children all over the his, web yeah his, and it's basically going to be a bunch of them and imagine them having the ability to control you know sections of you know electricity of internet of websites and have them throw in a, a temper tantrum and i think I not think, get their way see and i think uh, i think the subtlety in what james said is correct it's it's children um, one of the reasons he wanted to, you know, merge with a major is be because he couldn't make a, a copy was just yeah. another derivative copy. Yeah. In order to evolve in his programming, that was the only way to do it, which, which, which I, you know, I thought it was kind of clever. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of clever, but I mean, just imagine a bunch of children, oh, yeah. AIs, running around on the internet on top of the billions of children out there who are already unparented who you hear mommy don't take it away don't take it away all of a sudden you, it's gone you know it's like <laughs> really <laughs> and that's actually happened I, 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 we're not kidding I, I just I can't wait you know something like that to happen the internet's already full of trolls you imagine exactly. having an electronic troll I know um, I, I, I happen I'm, I'm a huge anime fan I love the story I love the animation style I'm, I'm a sucker for traditional animation styles I, I gave this a four out of five just because it's one of my all-time favorites. It's, yeah, it has some of my favorite themes and favorite stuff. So it's a to me it's a solid four to five. Which if if you've been watching the show over the last sixteen episodes, this is the first one I've given. Yeah. Um, what about you? Uh, I give this one a three. I think really what it set out to do, it did. Um, it did accomplish a lot of things. It was basically, like you said, it was really uh, groundbreaking in a few of its ideas and concepts as far as anime goes, the stylized. I thought it was really well done. So I give it a three. I, I couldn't push it to a four, but 
you know, that's kind of the difference between us in that one. It's, I think just, it's it's a difference between loving it and liking it. It's it just difference yeah. in, 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 in what your your flavor is of, of, of the movies and anime. Um, the next one is is James's pick, um, and and I'll, I'll let yeah. him get started. But this this is one that I wanted you that hope if you watch this, you you watched it and and what it was, because um, I think if if you watch it with a certain mind, you're not gonna like this movie. Because I I love uh, this movie, always have. Um, so what is it about? Well, this movie is directed by Ron Howard, starring Russell Crowe. IMDb says it's starring Russell Crowe and Ed Harris. I'm sorry, guys. Ed Harris does not have that big of a role. This is starring Russell Crowe and Jennifer Connelly. Um, this movie is loosely based around John Nash, who was, for his time, he made, ah, uh, sorry, I'm kind of choking on my words here. Anyway, it's uh, loosely based around a biography that was written, uh, I, for I forgot to write down the lady's name, but it's a book called The Beautiful Mind. I this think is it what was, this is. Sorry, I think this, it was written by his his wife. By S no, it wasn't. Oh no, yeah, you're right. It's by Sylvia Nassar. Yes, thank you. Uh, she wrote this story and basically took little snippets of John Nash's life and compiled <clears throat> the story around it. And that's what this movie is about. This movie is not a biography of John Nash. Do not take it as such. Um, it's not a biopic. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It, but it does cover most of the highlights of his life, which is really cool. So um, that's what this movie is about. Now, some of the big points that I took out of this movie is, first of all, the, the introduction to these characters, to the way that they, they are brought into the screen and introduced is really well done. I think that that is something that I have always appreciated about this movie is the fact of that. Now, one of the things that I always say, and a lot of people kind of give me weird looks because I've seen Gladiator a bunch of times. I did not like Russell Crowe until I saw this movie. And if any of you guys know Gladiator, that came out, what, a year or two before? I think so. Gladiator, I think, is one of the things that really established him. Everybody, I thought this, oh, this is a cool well, movie. Yeah, I mean, but uh, honestly, but I didn't think his, his acting, his acting was, wasn't that as good it wasn't as, acting. as this movie. No, I agree. The acting in here is really well done. And a couple points that I want to point out to people, if you watch this movie or you did watch this movie beforehand, is the realization that happens with uh, Russell Crowe's character, John Nash, and Jennifer Connelly's character of when they realize how crazy he is. You can look in their eyes and you can see that it's starting to click. It's it's setting in. There's a scene in there where Jennifer Connelly goes, uh, her character was a, uh, starts with an A. Alicia um, Nash. Alicia Nash. Um goes and does a couple things, a research type of thing, and finds some letters that he had. And then she confronts him in the visitation area of a psych ward. And she's having a conversation with him. And you can just look in her eyes and just see that she's starting to tear up because he's utterly convinced that this is really happening. And she has to break him. If you just watch her face, the way that Jennifer Connelly approached that section... She won the Academy right there. Straight out won it. I, I, and Russell Crowe, he's got another scene in the psych ward where he's digging in his hand oh, yeah. and just Ugh. tears his arm up. And if you look in his eyes, you can see just in the section where the doctor comes in and approaches him, you can see this change that Russell Crowe pulled out and just his eyes alone of him realizing that he's crazy. It clicked. It clicked right there, and Russell Crowe did an amazing job. And screw you, Denzel. Screw you, Denzel Washington. This, if if, if you're not sure what he's talking about, he's this has been a sticking you point for him for years. You stole this from Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe should have won the Academy. <laughs> screw all you guys. You don't know what the heck you're talking. Sorry. Let it let it I'll go, James. This, th that's been a sticking point for him for years. Anytime this movie is brought up, this has been like you know one of his his. Damn Denzel, you know, yeah. rallying cry. And, and this is actually a point on my paper. I wrote it here. It is. Robbed 
B- robbed. Matter of fact, we were watching we were watching the movie on Friday, and that was his that was his whole comment. It's like I hate Denzel. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just straight out just was right on Denzel. And there's another point that I brought up about this movie that I that came up last night, and I had to write it down. And it's on my phone. So hold on for a second. That this is such a good movie that it should not be watched very often. And the reason for this is because mo- all. Th- Basically, all the scenes in this movie were done so well that they're not easily forgotten. Every scene will stick in your mind if you actually approach this movie without any misconceptions, without preconceptions, without any of the trolls out there saying, oh, this point wasn't in there, this point wasn't in there. It's a book. Go off the book. If you approach it from that aspect... You will have most of these scenes stuck in your mind for years to come that you don't need to watch this movie. If you watch this movie like every six months, every year, you're going to get burned out on it. I think um, – so I don't mean to cut you off. Are you? No, I have one more point. But oh, go okay. Ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was going to say I think that's one of the keys of a good movie is, is a movie that you want to see again yeah. and again you realizing even though you remember all the scenes and you know that, that you still want to see it to me that's a sign of a good movie is that you can repeatedly watch it um whether it's six months every five years yeah. whatever the, the the you know the point is in time you want to watch it that to me is a key movie yeah and like i said is one of the this is one of those movies that it's so memorable that the the acting that was done in here was was really memorable and this is the last point that I had is just Ron Howard is an amazing director. You can look up his repertoire and just see list and list and list of really good movies that he's done over the years. And this is one of those movies that really highlights how good of a director and just his skill level. It really sets him apart. And a couple other movies that are out there is Cocoon, Apollo 13, Cinderella Man. He's got a couple flops in there, of course. Every good director has a couple in there because they learn from those. But this is one of those movies that really sets Ron Howard apart from any of the other directors that are out there that people try to give a claim to, like Shamali Ding Dong. Ron Howard is on a whole nother level. Well, I think if you compare uh, Ron Howard to M. Night Shyamalan, the difference is, <laughs> is uh, the, 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 the big difference is Ron Howard has continual amount of good movies. Yeah. And each movie's different. The plots are different. The devices used to move the story along are different. M. Yeah. Night Shyamalan movies are, once you've seen Sixth Sense, I can literally predict what happens at the end of the movie and with a 99.9% be almost 100% correct. Well, that's the other thing is that uh, some of the other actors in this movie – didn't really give away the plot. Oh no! This this was not, this was not uh, a lot of subtleties in the design of the movie. Yeah, I thought um, exactly. The the one thing that I forgot. Um, this is the second time I've seen the movie since its release. The one thing I forgot that Russell Crowe did, amazing job was his his ticks, his the, the way he yeah, moved his body, amazing. the way he talked. He was this character. I mean, this is. There's other movies I think you could do it. You could you could pick out um, Tom Hanks. Uh, some of Tom Hanks' movies, yeah, but he does stuff similar. But I thought the way he moved, it, he became the character. This, that, that, that to me was amazing. Um, yeah, I, he I, did an amazing job. He really did. I, I absolutely loved the way he did it. I mean, that it still to me is one of the all-time best jobs. And and I agree with James. <laughs> he should have won. <laughs> he yeah. was screwed, especially just on the ticks to continuously keep doing that and remembering how you did it. And to act like John Nash is, is not an easy thing to keep doing. To no, scene to it's scene. not. It's really not. <laughs> and and not do a super method man. <laughs> yeah, or throw it out or just, yeah. yeah. The, the other thing I thought, and, and this gives away the plot a tad bit, is when the roommate's niece shows up, she's running around the birds and the birds don't move. Yeah. That. I, I didn't catch it the first time. I wouldn't have caught it unless I actually read the IMDB page. That was subtle. If you were paying attention, you would have gotten it. But if you were just paying to the story, that was very background. Yeah. That was, that to, to me, once I, I saw that, I'm like, that was good. Well, there was a, a couple other things that I don't want to give away. If you really want, you can look at them up on IMDB. But there's some 
some other subtle, very, very, very subtle things that happen that do give away that. But, I mean, they are so hidden. Oh, yeah. yeah that yeah. if you don't know to look for them, you're not going to see them. There, there, uh, there's a lot of gems in this movie to me. Uh, the other thing is when, when Russell Crowe, Russell Crowe and Jennifer Conley's uh, interaction in the beginning was just astounding especially when when mm-hmm. he came in and, and asked her to, to, to you know would you marry me that interaction was there was just amazing um uh, john nash without giving too much is a very blunt non-people person and that if you've ever known anybody like that you know it's just kind of blunt here it is and she loves them for it which which and her reaction to that the whole yeah. scene every scene involving yeah. them up to a certain point is just incredible yeah um the other thing is i want to bring up uh, just because you brought her up is uh, just jennifer Connolly in this movie is such a natural beauty oh yeah i mean uh, just classic beauty right there i am sorry you got your career got bashed by the Hulk movie in what was it two thousand four? With Eric I am Banna. so sorry. Come back, we miss you. You're a great actress. She's also in a good movie, if I remember correctly, called Dark City with Kiefer Sutherland. Dark City. Great she movie. also did a uh, excellent job in Requiem for a Dream. Oh, I haven't I haven't seen that one. The the other point that I thought this this might be a little far fetched, but one of my favorite books of all time is The Count of Monte Cristo. And along that, if you've ever heard me talk about that, I thought every personality, every person he saw, represented part of his personality. Yeah. Um, like I thought his roommate represented his need to, to relax, the, to have fun, the, the need for interaction and personal connection with people. Um, I thought the little girl represent his his childlike nature. Yeah, his innocence. Yeah. Yeah, his innocence. And I thought the government agent um, represented his uh, his need to be important, his need to yes. be remembered, and, and he strive. Does, and he does talk about that. And he, yeah, there, there's a scene. I, I don't want to spoil it. Generally, we give spoilers, but I love this movie, so. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing is, I thought the look and feel of the movie, you know, you could nitpick the hell out of it. There are certain things that, you know, in the time period weren't there. But I thought yeah. in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s, they did an amazing job, the look and feel, especially with, you know, the, the, the 40s through the 70s. I thought they did a tremendous job. Um, I, I like the movie. I, I do. I, I can't give this a four. I, I just can't. It, it, it's right up there. I, I give it a, I give it a three. Um, this would be a three point five if, if that was in our system because I thought they did everything they wanted to do and they excelled at the points they made. Um, you know, part of my my thing I think is because the the Academy Awards screwed them. <laughs> you know, and it, w- what about you? Well, for me, this one is one where. If I have somebody ask me what do I consider a great movie, this is one of my top. Hmm. This is in my top, and this is going to be the first five. Oh, jeez. Of the show. Wow, 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 wow. So this is one of wow. those that, if I tell people what I'm looking for in a movie, <laughs> and I want to suggest somebody a movie that they're going to enjoy, this is one that I that is one of the first ones out of my mouth so okay so just a, a little story for 16 episodes we've never had a five james just broke it but i you know so she was saying because of the, the subtleties the this story went, everything in general if you take everything of this movie the acting the storyline the cinematography i mean the color the, the there's no real shaky camera at all ever in this movie true it's a very subtle study and well there is panning there is good panning. There is different things like that. The 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 joke, the humor, the there's action, there's drama, there's everything. There's thrill, everything in there. It's in there. God, you 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 you're talking to okay. You know, I'm I'm sorry. To, I'm gonna have to change my. I'm gonna have to give this a four. <laughs> Are you uh, sure? Okay. Yeah, he's he's you know he's. I'm not trying to talk here. you into it. I'm not. No, I, I'm just stating no, what, I, I, what I see in this movie when I look at it. I, I agree. I, I think some so of it for, for me was the subtlety. For so. this movie, the first time I saw it, I did have I did know quite a bit. I'd had I'd heard some of the troll stuff out there, and I came in with with that, and I still was blown away by how well this movie is. And for another reason is I had already had my preconceptions about Russell Crowe, 
and he changed all that. He actually made me go back and look at his career again. Uh, I'll agree. So that that's something that has to stand out. Wow. I uh, yeah. I I'm. So, I really wanted to be the first person to break a five just because I'm selfish. But uh, hey, after I had picked uh, some of the movies, I had you know. I mean, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I had to come well, that, back. With that something was my that, fault. I mean, it that was, was your that was fault, my fault. But I had to turn around and throw something back. So okay. <laughs> So, All right, so movie news. So Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so just to oh, yeah, kind of sorry. rehash what we did. Uh, Ghost in the Shell, I gave it a 4. James gave it a 3. And on Beautiful Mind, I gave it a 4 out of 5. James gave it the first 5 out of 5 for real, real flicks history. <laughs> and just because we're, we're almost at the time, so yeah, let's what see. it is, we're, we're running a little over, actually. So say, one of, my, one of the actors I've, I've grown to like just for one one movie is going to be in the new RoboCop. That's uh, John Earl Haley. He played Rorschach in The Watchmen. I, I love the character Rorschach, so I'm hoping he brings some of the, the same to it. I'm just hoping because... Uh, you, it's RoboCop. Yeah, it's RoboCop, <laughs> and he's basically going to be the trainer of RoboCop. I, I, I am really hoping that he's not like Rocky's trainer. I can't think of the guy's name right now. I'm hoping they. But don't I'm hoping it's not something like that, like da 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 yeah, da I'm, da da. I'm hoping they don't do. I'm hoping they don't do the pop and lock RoboCop. You know, yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. That. Can we get something besides a haymaker off of a robot? Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. You know. It, it, Anyways. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Um, the other one is Ghostbusters Three is getting a new writing staff. Um, if you've kept up in a little bit of this, is the two people generally behind it? If I remember, was um, Harold Rhymes. And the other guy, I can't remember. Uh, I don't know. Oh God, oh, I can't remember. I'm I'm sorry. He was the guy who was in uh, <sighs> Blues Blues Brothers. Dan Aykroyd. Oh yeah. Dan Aykroyd and Hal Rames have always. I think they've been the guys who originally kind of started it. They want to do it. Bill Murray's always been against it. I'm really hoping they get this because I love the Ghostbusters. I'm kind of hoping. Just because I kind of want to see a bad Ghostbusters, I'm hoping they do like you know, like uh, the year 3000, and they, they, you know somebody runs into the proton packs type of thing. But I'm hoping this succeeds. Um, they got that one of the apparently the Tropic Thunder writer is is uh, is was it part of the writers that's huh. going to do it. All right, I uh, actually enjoyed kind of uh, some of the writing, of, uh, some of the storyline of Tropic Thunder. To be honest, I, I you know I haven't actually watched it. Um, so I, I can't speak well, on that. And, okay. and the other one, the other one is I, I joked on a couple episodes ago about them making other oh, comic book geez. movies. Yeah. Um, and this is a joke come true, which I, I, I ran into this oh. on the Internet and, and I almost fell down laughing. I almost was about to call James up and say, hey, guess what I found? I know. Yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the I'm movie sorry, Ant-Man gets the gr- official green light. And if you don't know <laughs> Ant-Man, it's about a character by name Harry Prim. And he was one of the uh, founding members of, <laughs> of, of the, Avengers, of the yeah. Avengers. Thank you. And who apparently was such a non-character that they decided not to include him in any of the movies. But now they're giving him his own movie. <laughs> and if, if you can't see James's face right now, he has a look of utter disappointment. Okay, guys, uh, just so you guys kind of get an idea of what this movie is, this is going to become Attack of the 1 centimeter, 50 centimeter Red Spandex Hero. Oh, and uh, don't, don't forget to throw in some of my, you know, 50 some of the... Foot, well, 50 foot Spandex... Oh, no, geez. I was to think what it's, what it's also going to be, because he can shrink and he can, he can control ants. I know, great superpower, right? Well, he can tr- control insects. In, yeah, but, yeah, insects. So what it's going to be is you're going to see a small, a, a small guy riding an ant, and then somehow coming to the rescue, making himself what? bigger. <laughs> so it's the attack of the fifty foot man instead of well, the woman. Fifty foot fifty foot and like half centimeter, centimeter man. <laughs> half centimeter red spandex man. Wow. So I I I'm gonna see it just to see how bad it is. If it actually gets made, this was the official green light, but the way uh, things go in Hollywood, it could or could not happen. Uh, what about you? I know uh, we're, we're almost well, right over time. Uh, so. Basically what I got here, and I'm going to do this kind of quick for you guys, is movies coming out next month. So this is all coming out in August. We have, like, what, two days left of this month? Yeah. So next month, these are movies coming out, starting to come out in about a week. First of all, we have Total Recall. I'm not going to cover that again. That's coming out. I actually am looking forward to this movie. Surprise, surprise, guys. But Total Recall is one of those movies that is just action. There's really nothing to it. 
it's just action. Uh, hopefully, you guys have seen the Arnold one. Hopefully, dear God, hopefully this is going to be a lot better. Uh, another one that's coming out this month is another one to be looking for is uh, 360. This is uh, starting Rachel Weisz, Jude Law, Anthony Hopkins, and Ben Foster. It's a drama slash romance. A bunch of people have their story. They're going to basically take a bunch of different stories of each of these characters and slowly intersect them together somehow. It can be good or it could be a really bad movie. It's got Jude Law and Anthony Hopkins. So these are two guys that I do kind of keep an eye an eye on their career and see what they're doing. This the style uh, that the movies of its ilk generally they're either or they're either awful in my opinion or they're they're good. So it should be interesting yeah, to it, see how well this movie succeeds. That, that's kind of what I'm really looking forward to is to see how this movie pans out. Could, like John said, this could be really bad or it could be good. Yeah, it's either going to suck um, out loud or be very awesome. The other one that's coming out this uh, next month is Born Legacy. Jeremy Renner is the new hero. I want to see that. I do want to see this, but I'm kind of sitting back because sometimes, usually, what happens with these movies is they do really, really, really well with that with that normal main character, and then all of a sudden they have a new hero come in, and it just just doesn't work out. They, they, they I do like this new hero. I do like Jeremy Renner. I do, but yeah, he played Hawkeye in Avengers. Didn't yeah, he? it could go bad. It can. So my main concern is this is just watching off the trailers as an interrupting constantly, James. Um, is the fact that uh, yeah, no, I'm not dyslexic. So am I? Um, was that was the fact that uh, they generally they seem to make him the uber badass. They talk about genetically exactly. modifying him. He's this. He's that. They treat. They they, they seem to super top uh, the born character. Which I'm not fond of, but I want to see it because I liked the other three. So this is this is another one that's either going to be awesome or it's just going to suck. Yeah, like so, M Night Shyamalan suck. Oh, do you need a bit of... And and okay. Oh, one I more. Got, I got two more actually. Oh, okay, sorry. <clears throat> so I got two more. I want to get through, guys. Uh, yeah. So this, I really hope this movie pans out. I do like the Born, uh, basically series. I like the whole thing. I. have there's been a couple that were kind of, eh, but they still moved along the storyline, the plot line. So hopefully this one continues that. The next one coming out is The Expendables 2. I actually like the first one. I thought it was kind of enjoyable from a from an action hero fan. I do enjoy action hero movies. It's, it's, it's a throwback. Yeah, it's a throwback. So this one is basically, there's really no new plot here. It's just easy paycheck, turns into a mess. Jean-Claude Van Damme is the bad guy. There's your whole plot. But I'm still going to watch it because there's going to be blowing things up. There's going to be big guns show, shot. There's going to be fight sequences. There's going to be stupid male bravado stuff going on. It's just a fun movie. That's all it is. So that's one that's coming out that is going to be one that is will just be enjoyable. Nothing really out there. The other one that I that is coming out this coming month has kind of been a little bit not promoted that much. Lawless, Tom Hardy, who has played Bane and is going to play Mad Max. Ugh, I really hate saying this name. Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm Guy pa- Pierce. I'm hold pa- on. And Gary Oldman I- I- is in. This oh, that's movie. right. He is in that movie. And now, uh, I like three out of the four names <laughs> that I just put out. Uh, this is set in the Depression era, and it deals with bootlegging, and authorities are after them for their cut. They're basically set out, you know, it's in the Depression era. There was a lot of bootlegging going on there, there you know, and basically the authorities are coming after these guys to get a cut. Is there is there a town mention? Was it Chicago, no, New York? No, uh, I, d- I don't remember. I'm what... hoping it's Chicago, because that would be... I don't think it's Chicago. I think it's the Appalachians. Oh, okay, well, that would that would be pretty so, good too. I don't really remember. I remember kind of glancing it over, but it's basically small town, not no real big name out there, and they're bootlegging, and then they have to deal with the police. So this movie, I like the plot. I, I like I said, as I like most of the main characters here, or the main actors. It's just gonna be one to to see how it turns out. I'm I'm here's a, my first prediction for the show is Shia LaBeouf is either gonna make it or break it. I have a feeling just because, well, I don't like him as an actor, period. Yeah. But I have a feeling that he's, his role is either going to be important or it's going to suck. 
Um, and I'm going to throw a wild card out because generally the third pick is Ryan's pick, but because he wasn't able to make it, yeah. the wild card, and James doesn't know this, is what movie do you want to do? Oh, I, I kind of seen this one coming up. I, I pulled up my movie list. Okay. I have my, I actually have my movie list with me that I, that I guys out there, th- this is doing your homework. And the one that I am going to pick since I have, let's see here, one, two, three, and this four, is- Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty as backup movies. And I think this is one that we should both agree on. So. And guys, eyes closed. Green Street Hooligans next week, unless Ryan comes out and picks a different one. I, you know. I think this is going to be Ryan's pick. We're, I'm overriding no, him. Really? No Green Street Hooligans? Okay, no, 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 no. What I'm saying, what I'm saying oh, okay. is James and I just overruled Ryan's pick. So because he's not here, this is his pick for the month. <laughs> so All right. All right. It's, it's only fair. Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> not yeah. really, actually. So next week we're doing Green Street Hooligans, and I've never seen it, and this is starring Elijah Woods, right? Yes, it is. Okay, and so you know a little bit out about it? Uh, yeah, I do, but I think we'll just. Do you want me to keep the thing going you know, on? You know, that's just let's just tell this next week. Yeah, and we'll just keep a little, it up for next little week. synopsis about what we decided on today's show. A beautiful mind. I gave it a four. James gave it a five. Ghost in the shell. I give it a four. James gave it a three. And we shall see you next week. Goodbye. This episode of Old Guy Tech TV is brought to you by Ward's Automotive, specializing in Banks Power and Pack Brake. Servicing your car or truck and specializing in diesel engines. Over 30 years of service located in Diamond Springs, California. Give them a call at 530-626-5588.